standards. It isn't, because nobody poops on anybody else. But, um, <coughs> but that you had to watch this when you got there, and then you had to sign a thing that says, yes, I can deal with this. Because it was just part of what you'd be experiencing. And that's as a reintroduction to anime, because I'm like, you know, where's the wave motion gun and, you know, all this stuff from Star Blazers? Instead, it's like, whatever, <laughs> tentacles. Um, but, you know, you deal with it. And it was a job, and I needed a job. So I started working there as a DVD producer, and I remember them telling me, because I'm like, oh, well, because I was in sort of an entry-level thing. This was my first real job, by the way. I never, and, because I'd worked in, like, bars, and I'd been the rock and roll guy, you know. And not to say that working at a bar isn't hard work. It is hard work, but something that, you know, I, I was going to look at is this is a, could be a career or something I was going to do for a while. This was sort of my first real job. But I was a little old to be getting my first real job. I was like 26. Uh, but I was saying, well, you know, I'm this smart, creative guy. So I can, like, bring a new creative spin. And they're like, well, it's not really a creative position. And I'm like, well, oh, you know, this is DVD. You have all this freedom, whereas with VHS, you had to just show your program. But here, you know, we have options. And we can make special features. We can do all these other things. So we started getting creative, and they really responded to that. We started going into the studios, doing interviews with the actors. We started putting on other interactive features like little quizzes and, you know, just anything we could think of. Uh, and I think it really, it made the, the discs more interesting. Um, you know, and, and then quickly I moved on to being the guy who produced all the dubs. Uh, so I was their main, you know, English language uh, localization guy. Do you guys, anybody, do you guys watch dubs or subtitles? Who's uh, dubs? Who's subtitles? Yeah? Okay. No, that's okay. Um, so, now, now the, you know, and there's always been a big divide between that. Certainly at an anime convention, you're often favored by the subtitle people. But out of the people that actually watch and buy the stuff, it's like 90-10 dub watchers, which is why everything is dubbed, by the way, because it won't sell if it isn't. And that's the other thing. You start to learn a lot of the business aspects of it. That's why I said there's very few people who are in this business, who have stayed in this business, who were fans, who were like, I want to work on anime. Because a lot of times, you know, that gets in the way of what you of what you do. You know, you can't, you, it's okay if you're a fan, but you can't let your fandom interfere with your job. And sometimes your job might be something that runs contrary to your fan instincts, like with the subtitle dubbing thing. And, um, and that was an interesting aspect working at Central Park Media because they would ask you, like, the, there were like these fanboy, like, trap questions that they would ask you in the interviews. So when we interviewed new people, because they wanted, you know, if somebody was going to be a fan, it's like, you can't let this get in the way of your job. And also the other thing is you can't get on the internet and be like, blah, 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 guess what I did today? Because they had a lot of, uh, you know, it's a lot of security. They didn't really want to talk about what they were doing. So I worked there for a while, and I produced a lot of English language stuff. Um, I worked on a lot of stuff that was really good, and a lot of stuff that was crap. Um, now, you guys are all big anime fans. Do you, do you just love it because it's Japanese? What do you love about it? Tell me. Somebody tell me what, what do you love about it? Why do you love anime so much? Okay, interesting stories from Potlines, yeah? The Mad Hatter? Man service. Boobs and panties, okay. Right, right. Okay. <clears throat> well, that's cool. It reminds me of, of, of an old friend. Speaking of boobs and panties, I was just in uh, the second season of Icky Tosin. I was Kakutan, the guy with the eye patch. Uh, he doesn't get in on the boob and panty action, though. He's very sullen. But it was a cool show. Um, <clears throat> and I guess season three will be coming up at some point this year. Uh, okay. Well, that's good. Because, you know, a lot of things... Because I've worked on this wide range, and I found that anime is in a lot of ways, it's just like every other form of media or entertainment that there's a ton of it out there. Some of it is amazing. Some of it's pretty good, and a lot of it sucks. Just like any kind of music, you know, the stuff you hear on the radio, you know, you listen to 10 songs in a row, 
Maybe half of them are good, and maybe out of that half they're good, one or two are awesome. And that's kind of the way it is. Now, the stuff that makes its way to America, we're lucky because most of the companies will sort of pick and choose. And there's, you know, lower end stuff that gets left behind, and we get a lot of the higher end stuff, which is nice. But the dramatic plot lines is something that's very different than when you look at uh, American, let's just say, cartoons as opposed to animation. Although some things that are often classified as cartoons, I think, do have that same depth. A show like Avatar, you guys watch Avatar? Yeah? Av I think Avatar is, is the best cartoon slash animated series that I've seen in years. It's, it's fantastic. And, and the key to Avatar? Only ran for three years. That's it. Had a beginning, middle, end. Done. You know, anything that is open-ended, that you run out of ideas eventually. So anyway, working at Central Park Media, let me tell you guys about a couple of things that I worked on over there that you should all go see. One thing was called Now and Then, Here and There. Anybody seen that? Now and Then, Here and There is the best thing I've ever worked on. It's, it is brutal and it's painful emotionally. Uh, I don't mean brutal in the technical sense, <laughs> but I mean, it's a spectacular work of art. It's a 13 episode series. What's that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's great. I, you know, uh, you know, I got a, one of the interesting things that I did when I was at Central Park Media, here's a weird story, is, you know, we did uh, Grave of the Fireflies, right? Y'all seen that? And Feel Good Movie of the Year, right? <laughs> It's a spectacular film, and actually, uh, well, ADV or whatever, the ADV, that Houston, now they have that, and they're, you know, releasing it. Um, and I recommend you all to get that one, just don't watch it if you're depressed, because you won't survive. It's, uh, it's sad, but it's a great work of art. Um, they sent me to Chicago to interview Roger Ebert about that, because it was one of his favorite movies. Not one of his favorite anime, it's one of his favorite movies of all time. And me and him sat down on the, at the movie set, we had this great talk about it. It's on the DVD, you should check it out. Um, but I actually gave him a box set of Now and Then, Here and There. Uh, and he had written to me, and he was like, he's like, well, this is really dramatically amazing. He's like, it's, it, could never, it couldn't play really on mainstream American TV, because it's so raw, uh, but he loved it. So I recommend that. The other thing that I have to recommend of all the stuff I worked on it in my years at Seth Park Media was the Ping Pong Club. Anybody ever seen that? The Ping Pong Club was like this Beavis and Butthead, the South Park kind of, it, it's just this bizarre, freaky, irreverent humor. You know, and I mean, irreverent, like in South Park, you know how Cartman will dress up as Hitler sometimes? And let me tell you, you've got to be really good at what you do to be able to get people to laugh at Hitler. You know, so uh, that's, and that's, there's the lead character in that would often kind of bust out his Hitler outfit and kind of go crazy. But I'm telling you, the Ping Pong Club, find it somewhere. It's hilarious. It's a 26 episode series. Um, but yeah, you know, there were a lot of highs and lows. Uh, I ended up, you know, and I ended up getting sent to do all sorts of strange things because, you know, Central Park Media used to release a lot of hentai. And a company, at one point, started doing hentai with actual adult film stars, like these, you know, female uh, adult film chicks would get in there and voice the parts and all this stuff. Yeah? Well, I just, I just see, oh yeah, 